Hey, man, it's whatever. Because I mean, like, because literally, I mean, my biggest thing is what I'm trying to get you to understand is what I, I just, I don't think you realize. I feel like you, you kind of, you, you accuse me of performing the mental gymnastics, but I feel like it's kind of what you're doing when we, make, when we talk about this subject. Because I still feel like regardless of how you try to look at it, regardless of how you try to word it by saying right. individual rights or anything like that, the idea of capitalism, right. and capitalism was truly supposed to benefit everybody, or if it was really going to, the idea of capitalism was supposed to work the way it was supposed to, then black people would be in a much better place today. And I feel like when you have these, when we talk about these things, like Black Wall Street and these self-sustaining black communities, regardless of how they were funded, regardless if someone gave them a business loan or they were funded by the KKK's money or whoever, like, if it was truly supposed to work the way that you say it's supposed to work, all these things would still exist today. Those things wouldn't have just vanished because why? Because capitalism would be working the way it's supposed to. Everybody's profiting off of it. Yeah. So I mean, but, but what you keep forgetting is because you, you you drag you drag all the way into modern times, and what you forget there's there's tons of things that you forget, right? You're talking about a time in in which we have again. I would reference this. We're talking about uh, bank regulation in which it kind of forced the banks to go into the whole entire thing of redlining, uh, putting ceilings on their, uh, on their interest rates and stuff like that, which caused them to ration uh, how much they're going to give out, which you know, kind of forced them to go on certain areas and whatnot. We're talking about the time of a massive business and trade uh, barriers. We're talking about wage uh, regulation. And I'll give you a good example, wage regulation and stuff like that. Um, the first minimum wage law in the 1931, um, it, it did a tremendous, uh, it did the black community harm, right? And why? Because the median age of the black community is 18 and the median age of the white community is 36, right? And because the uh, white community is much older, um, they have more experience. When you raise the minimum wage, and we can see this historically all the way from the 1930s all the way up, up when you raise a uh, minimum wage, it forces the business people to look at not only uh, not the merits anymore, but look at price and dollars and stuff like that based on based on your your race and stuff like that. Um, and what happens is that the black minorities usually get cut out of the job because they're very young and they're just graduating high school and they can't get any job. Right. And that's what historically has been happening. And this is not even an America thing. This has been happening in Africa. Right. In Africa, they instituted a minimum wage to bar certain people out of the market. And, and even even it was unprofitable. Certain businesses were failing. And what they did is ignore the minimum wage law and started hiring tribes that they were legally not supposed to. And certain people that they were legally not supposed to because uh, the, the, law, the law and the way it was set. Right. So not only wage laws, we're talking about uh, I already went occupational licensing. Um, I don't want to be sound like a conservative, uh, but definitely welfare. I wouldn't be an advocate of these things because it would be totally against of, of what I'm talking about when I say capitalism. Yeah, well, well, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you why I completely disagree with that, because if it weren't for things like welfare, my grandmother would have never been able to pull herself out of poverty, which she raised my mom and her two brothers in. And when she was on welfare, I mean, mo there, here's the thing. Until this day, black people still get demonized for collecting welfare. But what people love to leave out of context is that black people are 13 percent of the population, yet 20 percent of the race is living in poverty. And that's at the very top. White people make up, what, 70, 76 percent of the population, give or take, whatever, and yet there is only 9% of the entire white race that is living below the poverty line. And yet they collect the most government assistance overall. So the thing is, it's like you, you, you can't really base the idea that welfare is what holds black people down or if that's what's killing our anti-capitalist society because it's really not. If it wasn't for welfare, my grandmother would have never been able to provide, put food on her table, have proper housing, and raise my mom and her two brothers in order to put herself through nursing school to get her nursing license to retire a registered nurse making nearly six figures a year. Like, it, it, yeah, if that if there was never no welfare, she wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, but the, 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 my has parents nothing... would probably still be in poverty, and I probably would still be living in poverty, too. There would have been no break in that cycle. Yeah, but hold on. That has that has a little bit nothing to do with what I'm what I'm saying because I'm not arguing how efficient welfare is in all these government institutions. I'm not talking about the efficiency. I'm talking about the the principle 
Um, and that would be totally against the principle, right? The, 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 the leading up things that would lead to, to the institution of capitalism. And, and this is what John Locke, Montesquieu, uh, Adam Smith, John Baptiste say, all the leading capitalists of the 17th and 16th um, you know, century and stuff like that is looking at each person as an individual. And this would be totally antithetical, uh, totally against the notion of racism, because what racism is, is that you look at, you, per, you know, you look at a group of races, uh, a group of races, and you say, well, they all have this one characteristic. Uh, they're all dumb, they're all savages, and they're all this and that, instead of looking at the product of their moral character. And if a racist, let's say we had a racist dictator, because this racist believe that they're below uh, human level, right, they're inferior, a racist would actually institutionalize uh, systemic racism, right? Is because they, they don't believe that these certain races have um, certain races have uh, rights and stuff like that. And this is what the Confederate uh, government did actually in the South, right? This is exactly what the Confederacy did did in the South. They they had the they had the most perfect example of systemic racism in there. It's actually ridiculous, right? They didn't advocate for individual rights. The actual Constitution talks about individual rights. The, conf the Confederate state, uh, the Confederate uh, Constitution, they talk about states' rights in which you have to sacrifice yourself to the state and stuff like that. That's not that's not capitalism. That's 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 taking states as thinking that they're each an individuals. No. We're not talking. I'm not an advocate of states' rights in which you have unlimited control in your own little, you know, province and whatnot. I'm talking about a, a proper government to protect each individual on the basis that they are, be because they are an individual, not on the basis of race, but based that we all have the same characteristic, uh, which is reason, the the faculty of reason. And, and Thomas Jefferson said that reason is our oracle, right? And we all have that same characteristic. So we're, we're the same. We're the same in kind on that characteristic. And we all have individual rights based on that. And that's what I'm arguing. Yeah, no, I'm not. And here's the thing. I'm not taking that away from you. I'm not saying that we don't have individual rights. But what I'm saying is, like, you can't deny the things that leading up, regardless when that individual rights, the idea of individual rights was written, you got to remember that that was never with the intentions to include black people is what is really the main point that I'm trying to push across here. Um, so I, would, I would, I know, I would doubt it. Um, so our, so, you, so, our hold on. so real quick. So, when, so you're saying that when they wrote all men were created equal, yep. you believe that they were referring to the slaves as well? Yeah. Tr no, well, with slaves as well. I put it this way. Um, yeah. They were referring to the slaves and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, all our founding fathers, um, well, firstly, I'll get this one out. Um, so John Adams, Samuel Adams, um, Alexander Hamilton, they did not own slaves and throughout their whole entire life, they were against slavery. And even to the point, uh, even to the ones that did own slaves, they even denounced their own actions, right? I'll give you an example, example, um, uh, Patrick, right? Jo I think his name is, uh, Johnson Patrick. No, I forgot his name. H Henry Patrick, right? He called his actions culpable, right? Uh, Benjamin Franklin owned slaves, but he got rid of his slaves. And then he's, he was the one that's, uh, written the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Jefferson, um, in all his private letters to even Henry Lee, uh, called racism, uh, and not racism, but slavery a bad thing. And he said, uh, he said that we have self-preservation in one hand and injustice in the other. What was he referring to? He was referring to this thing called the post-emancipation uh, problem, which he said, which he, Jefferson said that if I let my slaves free, they have every single right to kill me and any other just random white, pe white person on the street. But for convenience, he wanted it to keep slavery and stuff like that in the sense that he doesn't want just a bunch of uh, pre-existing slaves to go kill people. Um, but he totally denounced slavery in his private letters and stuff like that. He even got rid of four slaves and attempted to get rid, rid of the rest of his nine, but the bank w w didn't allow him because he was in debt. Um, who else do we have that's uh, totally against slavery? Benjamin Franklin petitioned the government to get rid of slavery. Jefferson did the exact same thing. He wrote in the Virginia Constitution to ban uh, slavery, and he's the one – they even got rid of uh, put in the Constitution to ban the import of slaves in, in 1808, right? So a lot of our founding fathers, absolutely, they, they referenced uh, uh, black people. Um, they just didn't know how to get rid of slavery, right? It's the post-emancipation problem. And, and secondly, it's not only the post-emancipation problem, but also they forgot. Well, also they forgot. They thought they thought uh, slavery was going to um, die a natural death. And I'll give you an example. Oliver Ellsworth said that as more people come into the north and the population increases and the imports of slaves uh, were cut in 1808, slavery will just shrink. And, and, the, and, and the founding fathers were wrong about this, right? Why? Because of the, the invention of the cotton gin, which imported massive amounts of slaves between, be, uh, before eight to, uh, 1808. So the founding fathers just didn't know how to get rid of slavery. They were uh, a bit scared. 
on how to do so. Um, Alexander Hamilton said, let them fight in the war. George Washington disagreed. But the fundamental thing is that they, in the private letters, they all disagreed with slavery and they wanted to get rid of it somehow. But, okay. I mean, that was, that was a good talking point that you just mentioned. But however, I completely disagree and I'll explain why. Because if they truly wanted to get rid of slavery, they could have done it. I mean, like, let's just be real here. Lincoln, I mean, if they, if it was just as easy for Lincoln to pick up a pen and sign the Emancipation Proclamation conveniently right as the South started succeeding, and let's just be real here, bro. You got to remember, if you read that letter, I know you know what letter I'm talking about, where Lincoln said, if I could save the Union by freeing all the slaves, yep. I'd free them all, or if I could free, save the Union by freeing no slaves, I wouldn't free any, or whatever. Here's the thing, like, they might have all agreed with the idea that slavery may have been morally wrong, but at the end of the day, they didn't They didn't want to get rid of slavery because at the end of the day, that was what was causing these problems. So when Lincoln essentially knew when he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which was going to hurt the South because they were the driving force, they were literally, he literally wiped away their entire workforce, yep. which, which basically stopped them from, you know, benefiting off the, which I, I refer to as the idea of capitalism. So he knew if he took that away, he took away all the way, all the way the means of production. He took away the power, blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. So it's no, it's like I feel like it's no secret why he put the clause when he wrote in the Thirteenth Amendment: everyone is free except those used as a punishment for crime, slavery, and all that stuff. I feel like he specifically left that in there as a loophole for like, hey, look here. You can guys can re-enslave black people after we already freed them, and they you hear you can rebuild the South because of that, and essentially that's what they did. Because essentially what Lincoln did with that is he made slavery legal again. They didn't have, and that was at an all-time high racist period. You didn't need a reason to lock up black people and throw them into slavery. You, hell, you could have seen a black guy walking down the street, and you could say he looked at your wife. Oh man, I want him arrested. You're, you're in jail, bro. You, like, here's the thing. Like, there, there's no getting by that. So that's why I feel, regardless of any way you try to look at it, the ideal of capitalism alone is always going to be rooted with racism, no matter what way you try to look at it, because there's no in time where is what I'm saying. And this is kind of simple. Um, you were referencing Abraham Lincoln and stuff like that. I would have to specifically reference the founding fathers and stuff like that. Um, I mean, the well, founding fathers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the founding fathers, and, and I'll tell you how many theories uh, there are were to get rid of uh, racism, right? So let's let's go one by one, right? So one, you have total immediate emancipation. Then you have gradualism, which you go through gradual emancipation. Um, and then you have uh, the colonization of blacks and move them all to the West, or you have the colonization of them to move them into Liberia and Africa, or you can go to what William Lloyd Garrison wanted, which was moral persuasion and stuff like that. Did you want moral persuasion? And if not, you want to do it through political means? And if so, are you going to just immediate abol uh, abolish or you want to do it gradual? And if you do it immediately, do you want to uh, compensate the slave owners for the private property? So there was thousands of, well, I wouldn't say thousands. There's a lots of different ways that the founding fathers wanted to do it, and they all disagreed. And so, so it's not that they could have just went into to office and say, well, here's the laws and principles and we're just going to immediately uh, 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 abolish. Right, because that would be it. There will be kind of uh, tyr tyrani uh, tyr uh, tyrannic. What do you know what I mean? It would be kind of like uh, a contradiction. <laughs> yeah, tyrannical in contradiction to <laughs> what the, you know, the, the other founding fathers and, and stuff like that. But, but you know, Abe Lincoln – uh, the leading um, abolitionist, William Lloyd Garrison, Ab Abraham Lincoln kind of nodded his head in one of his works um, and, and even um, perpetuated the, the, the principles of the Declaration of Independence. And, 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 and before William Lay, uh, Lloyd Garrison uh, died, he couldn't tell if he was like um, – he if, if Lincoln was a Garrisonian or that he was a Lincoln a Lincolnian or, or whatnot, right? Because they no, nodded head at both of them. They both liked each other. So, I mean, obviously it wasn't to the extent that, you know, hey, I'm just going to, you know, do it for immediate convenience and whatnot uh, and stuff like that. So, Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but regardless, I mean, like, they knew – they knew once they freed, and granted, we also got to remember the Emancipation Proclamation didn't free all the slaves, and there's a reason why it specifically 
all this, the 13th Amendment, why it only applied to the states that seceded. Like, there's really, I feel like that's also no coincidence either, because if that was really the case, then it wouldn't have just applied to those states. Like, they did it to essentially to appease the South. Like, look here, we know we screwed you guys over by, you know, taking away your slaves. So here, we're going to write in this little law that essentially is going to give them back and you guys can build yourself up after that. So, I mean, regardless of, I mean, you could say like everybody had the idea of wanting to get rid of it. Like, I mean, till this day, I mean, we, everybody has an idea of building the black community up and rebuilding self-sustaining black communities. But I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, you know? It, it yeah, really and I'm not arguing that it's supposed to happen, right? It really depends on what the individual does, right? I'm not arguing that, like, yes, everyone's going to be so great and under capital. It's not what I'm arguing, right? What I'm arguing is that the productivity and your success is dependent on you, and the only system that's going to allow that to happen, right, that you have the freedom to even to think for yourself and act upon your own judgment to produce the material values for what you need and invest in certain things. The only system that's going to do that is where you have private ownership in which you can think for yourself, where you're not forced to think for others, where you're not forced under the will of others. And I'll give you another example. George Fitzhugh argued against the North because it led to private judgment and private judgment was wrong because black people were not under the will of slave owners, right? They had their own will. They had their own reason. And that's kind of the problem. Um, you know, and, and there's many other uh, prominent uh, uh, pro-slavery ar uh, arguments and stuff like that, like John Patet, you have William Lancey, you have William Har uh, Harper, you have um, Henry Hammond. And these people were total uh, rejectionists uh, of the Declaration of Independence. And, and it's because the individual rights is what prompted them to argue against it. It's, it's because, you know, if I own slavery, uh, own slaves, and if the Declaration of Independence is correct in the sense that everyone is equal and based on individual rights, and I'm not allowed to use force against them, then I have to argue it against it. John Patek called the self, a Declaration of Independence a self-evident lie, right? So, so they didn't believe in absolute moral truths. Our founding fathers did. Our founding fathers, what actually happened is that there was Isaac Newton. And Isaac Newton was a physicist in which he was trying to understand the world through reason. And John Locke was like, wow, that's really cool. I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to do it with morality and developed individual rights. And his work started getting into a, the Americas in around the 1600s. And, and our founding fathers were really well read on the works of uh, you know, John Locke and stuff like that. And they believed that individual rights were timeless, right? I, I believe it's John Adams that said that rights are timeless in the sense that they're universal. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what color, creed, or uh, race that you are, right? So they believed it in a, in a universal sense, while the pro-slavery argue, uh, argued that rights are contextual in, in, in what history that you're in, right? They argued that rights depended on what type of country that you were in. Rights depended on uh, where you were, what time period. Rights were, were malleable or, or changeable. Founding fathers said, no, it's, it's universal. It's, it's absolute, put it that way. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess you can make that argument, but I don't know. Like, I just feel like the main thing is, like, I don't feel like it was a coincidence why things happened the way they did in history. It's basically what I'm saying. Like, the anti one of the biggest driving factors basically that built this country like this entire country was built off the backs of slaves for free for that matter the u.s capital was built by slaves for free like there's been basically this this whole country i mean granted there are people here regardless we can get into that history later but this whole entire country was built off of exploiting black people and using them for free labor and I mean, regardless, yeah. here's the thing, like, and let me, let me just take it back a little bit further. If you were living back then in that time period, and if you specifically had a plantation, this was how you fed your family, you know, you, you, you had lived your way of life, you basically lived the American dream that your forefathers, you know, basically had planned out for you. But that means that you need to keep these slaves in order to keep living your lifestyle. You're going to tell me honestly that you would have gotten rid of your slaves. If, I mean, if, if, because you felt they morally, they had the rights or it was morally wrong or based on their individual rights, they should have been freed. And even though that was your bread and butter. 
I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people that struggle with exactly that for convenience. I mean, they, they even put this in the private letters. I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? Henry Patrick called his actions culpable, worthy of blame. And yeah, there's a lot of people that did it for convenience, but there are uh, other ones that took the morality to the extent that they did and got rid of their slaves. Like John Jefferson attempted to do some, but he, he, he was in debt and was unable to. Benjamin Franklin definitely got rid of his slaves and stuff like that. Um, but I would say a lot of the founding fathers were one – didn't really know how to, to to get rid of slavery because of the the mass amount of theories, and secondly, they feared self uh, them trying to come after them and, and kill them and, and whatnot. So I think there was a lot of a pushback, and there's there's tons of American revolutionaries that kind of forced our founding founding fathers to do that uh, to feel that moral guilt and also. I try to petition against slavery and stuff like that. Revolutionaries such as um, I, a good one is Levi Hart, right? He says that the founding fathers had no such right to say that they were enslaved by Britain if they had domestic slavery. And yeah, he's correct. And they realize these, uh, these American revolutionaries that they, yeah, they're in a direct contradiction. Or how about, don't remember his name. Um, one of them said that, um, I think it's James Otis. He says the, the loudest cries or the loudest yelps for um, a liberty was the black uh, what well, was the black community because of slavery? And then they argued and they poked fun at uh, the founding fathers. And they said, it was like, don't the slaves realize like the founding fathers are like writing the constitution about equality and still own slaves. Like, doesn't that, does not like kind of like hit the heads of the slaves. And it's like, why am I here? Or like, you know, kind of like, yeah. that's like a dumb moment. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I just, yeah. Cause like, I feel like regardless, I mean, the the whole the whole system that was put in place, you know, the whole slavery movement, like that was really the driving force of this country and made it essentially what it is today. So, I mean, which is why I say, like I said, which is essentially what my whole point was coming back to, to bring it back full circle, is the ideal of capitalism is so rooted in racism is that's why our country exists the way it is today, because of racism. If there was no slavery, if there was no racism, America wouldn't be here today because we wouldn't have had anybody to build it. You think our forefathers were going to use all these white people to go out there and be out there picking cotton or, you know, out there using them and, you know, beating them and all that stuff, helping them in captivity? That, they weren't going to do that to their own kind. They needed somebody to do it to. And like, oh, what better people to use than the people that we stole from Africa and bought here? There. Yeah. Let's go ahead and use it. That's I mean, why I feel like when he was there, here's the thing. And going back to what I said earlier, I feel like when he freed the slaves, like he, he did it as an economic decision, not as a moral decision. Because if it was that easy for him to pick up the pen and just sign it, oh, the Emancipation Proclamation, bam, it's signed. Why didn't he do that before? Like if it was the, the whole, if he really wanted to get rid of it that bad and if he really could have done something that extreme, why didn't he do it much sooner? And I feel like it's because it was more beneficial for him at that time, which is why he even said to save the union specifically, which is what he cared about at the end of the day, the union. That was all that mattered. Slaves, black people's rights, none of that was none of that was in mind when he wrote that in there. So that's why I say, regardless of how you look at it, capitalism will always be rooted in racism, regardless of how you try to look at it. I mean, I would I would I would push back on that because like even like, okay, even so, like, I think there's more historical points against it. But even so, let's say that the, the Americans, Africa brought slaves 1619, whatnot, and stuff like that. Uh, that whole entire period was totally uh, devoid of like any type of um, actual proper government or anything. It was up until like the 1700s and stuff like that. And I would say like any time that the black community even got contact with the smallest principles of capitalism, let's give an example, um, self, uh, self renting, or not self, uh, slave renting. Right. Slave renting was the period in time which um, there was people who didn't want to own slaves. So what they would do would just rent out slaves and say, hey, I just want you for a couple of months or a year and stuff like that. And this is the, the one of the first contacts of capitalism that slaves get to have, which they get to be um, shoemakers, where they get to be architects, where they are not architects, but where they get to what's what's the other ones? Uh, wait, 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 hold on, bro. I, I think you might be talking about indentured servants. Not no, slaves. no, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not talking about indentured servants. Um, specifically, talk about this. It was a. It was more prominent in Carolina, right? It's slave renting, right? You should. Uh, you can look it up. I. I you know. yeah. So no, slave. Yeah, yeah. So slave renting, right? I get to rent a slave, 
And I, I, for me, I get to do certain work. You can just do this work for a couple of months and a couple of years, and then you go back to your, uh, your uh, master or whatnot. And, and what happened is that between the hire, right, the renter, and, and there was conflict between the hire and the owner, right? Why? Because the owner started to get scared because it, it started to become a, a very big thing that slaves, what they used to do, because it, it was informal at first and became formal and recognized by law, that slaves we used to have certain badges and stuff like that on their necks to identify what type of skills that they had because it, it was that big of a thing. Um, right. and, and what happened is that there were so many free slaves just working and stuff like that and being rented out for, for X amount of time that the white people started to get it scared because there was a bunch of free men walking. Technically there was a bunch of free men walking, getting paid, doing jobs and stuff like that. And what they did 18, eight, I believe 1845, they, they made it illegal. Right. So so that's a time in which they got just a little taste of what capitalism was, was free trade business, uh, getting having their own private property to the extent that they did of, of a wage. Um, and it was totally outlawed, which is something that's something like that wouldn't um, a, a law coming in and trying to ban it. That shouldn't have happened. Obviously, slavery in the first place shouldn't have happened. But what I'm saying is that that little taste of capitalism is what made black people um, to the extent that I had a, a little more prosperous than just being a slave on the field. Yeah, but I mean, like, at the end of the day, though, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, it gave them that little bit of taste of capitalism, but that's where, you know, I keep coming back to the full the argument is that they were never meant, the thing is, like you said, they were, they were worried, they had all these freed slaves, they're like, holy shit, we put these people in slavery, beat them, raped their women, et cetera, et cetera, and like all these years, and we got these people just walking around, so what happened was they felt safer with these people locked away in prisons. And that was why so it was no big deal for black people to just be arrested and thrown in jail for petty crimes and little to nothing. And that's why slavery was such a big deal because essentially they advocated for it. And also it's a win-win. Not only do the white people have all these scary black people off the streets, but now look here, now these states have these their slaves again. They can go back to exploiting them, using them for free labor and bam, benefiting off of that capitalism that we're talking about so it's like regard that's where i you know why i say like regardless of how we look at it like there's just you you can't go out the way and say like people can benefit or black people can benefit off capitalism without using the fact there that, that racism is what basically caused this in the first place it's the reason why those ideals of capitalism why we don't have self-sustaining black communities today why the black communities are in the conditions that they're in right now. It's simply all due to the historic racism. I mean, but when you said earlier that cap an aspect of capitalism is private ownership, it is exactly racism that destroyed the private ownership of slaves. It destroyed, it, even back to slave renting, it destroyed the private ownership of their ability to go, get, go out and get a wage. Right. So that's that's the whole entire contradiction that I've been trying to flesh out is that if capitalism, it just uh, an aspect of it. Right is private ownership, right? It is racism. And I, as I put in my opening statement, racism and capitalism would be incompatible, right? Because racism, as I said earlier, racism, if a racist gets the law, they would institu institutionalize uh, systemic racism in which they, certain races doesn't have certain rights. They're not allowed to do this and they're not allowed to do that. They would totally uh, ban private ownership uh, to the extent of how far they would go. I don't know. But they would, they would, they would stop private ownership. And that's what I'm against. Right. So so you would have to recognize um, each person as who they are as an individual and recognize their individual rights. That's what racism does not do. Right. And that's the difference. That's how that's the fundamental difference between capitalism of what I'm trying to talk about in capitalism, the sense of individual rights and then uh, uh, basing your policies and your government and how to interact with people based on the, that they are the individual and they have individual rights. Or you're going to be a racist and you're not going to look at the individual. You're going to look them at look at them as a collective. and You're going to make laws based on them being a collective. Uh, I want this law not because of, the, of, of a person, but this race. And that's the distinction between capitalism and, and statism, which statism would be more in the line of racism and capitalism would be looking at each individual as themselves and they can have private ownership of certain things to profit and whatnot. Well, I'm going to tell you the only reason why I disagree with that is because essentially, would you say it's racist to call the suburbs the white community? Um, no, I think I think it's a general identification. No. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, what um, before we can continue, I'll tell you what I think is racism. Um, I'll give you three quick examples. 
Um, you can say, hey, you're a black guy. You like watermelon. Hey, you're a black guy. I belong in a plantation. Hey, you're a black guy. I'm going to clutch my purse because I think you're going to steal. And all those three examples, what I think is racism is the belief that the content of your mind is determined because of your race, right? I'm looking at your race and I'm saying, hmm, this guy automatically likes watermelon or hmm, this guy can't live peacefully. He should deserve to be on a plantation because he's a savage or hmm, I think you value robbing people because you're black. And that's the three examples of racism is believing that the content of your mind is determined, right? That you have no free will, right? Just because you're black, you have no free will to reject. Eh, I don't really like watermelon and stuff like that. No, you're saying that you like watermelon because you're black. And that's what I think racism is. And because if, if people believe that racism fundamentally, that you have no free will, you are determined to act in certain ways, especially like the plantation one, right? Of that you can't leave. And this is what George Fitz, you argued that people, uh, black people in the North that had the free will and the, uh, the freedom to trade and stuff like that. He said, it's a bad thing because black people are technically savages. They should be under control of our will, our, our, um, our masters, the master's will and stuff like that. So when you have people like that, that are racist, that think that black people are determined based on in their mind, um, you get people in power and then you, then they institutionalize uh, systemic racism, which is the, which the Confederate exact, uh, what the, exactly what the Confederate had. So that's what I take to be racism. And that's antithetical or contradictory to the principles of capitalism, which I've been trying to outline. Well, yeah, well, here's the thing, like, you don't, you don't think that there is a still a good amount of white people who feel the way of what you just said? Um, I, I think, I think there's a lot of people and I mean, not, not only does it, there's probably a lot of white people that still are racist today, but I don't think anybody look at racism as the way that I do in its most fundamental sense, I would say. Well, yeah, well, here's the thing. That's the key part, the way that you do, because you got to understand everything that you just said is basically what a lot of white people still think today. They believe that black people are by nature we're we're violent we they they push this narrative that black people are inherently violent which is why it's no secret why planned parenthoods and stuff like that exists in our neighborhoods at a much higher rate if you look at the woman who started at uh what's her name margaret oh margaret sanger please no 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 don't bring it up yeah. bro hey hey yeah. i'm not gonna I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna save you time i'm gonna save you time but after this after this go check yeah. out my highlights bro because a lot of this shit, and, it, and it's 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 pure conservatism. A lot of the conservatives slandered her name, bro. I have like all the screenshots of Margaret Singer in my highlights, and it's just yeah. false, one after one, false. Oh, she visited the KKK, false. The the oh, Negro no. quote, quote. Okay, so I just no, I no, just, no, I, no, I'm I'm basically no, no, I'm basically straight just straight talking of her ideas of eugenics and stuff like that. Yeah, her you uh, her view uh, uh version. I, I'll put this out there, and we'll go, go back to like slavery and stuff like that. Her version yeah. of uh, eugenics. You got to think in the context, right? This is this is like the early 1920s before the 1940s. So eugenics in the science community during then was that, oh, don't smoke, eat healthy, work out and whatnot. Then into the 1940s, and this is why eugenics today is not popular. Uh, you know, not, yeah, I don't even want to say the word Germany and stuff like that started institutionalized eugenics and stuff like that, that certain races are inferior. And then it lost so much popularity. But in her context, she was advocating for a good, um, good actions like working out not smoking and drinking and then i have a quote in my highlights as he says if eugenics and unfit refers to religions or race that's something she frankly deplores and she says that explicitly during an inter interview right so it's a historical context right i think people uh, combine eugenics before the 1940s and the 1940s together and they package deal it to one but um well, but yeah we can yeah go ahead yeah no 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 yeah that's what i was saying but no regardless like she she's not even really the the main source of the topic it's like it's just like I feel like people like they don't they don't look at things as a whole like they feel like there's a reason like I said black they people feel that black people are inherently dangerous by nature like they feel like it's in our genes it's just oh a black person kills a black person oh uh, typical it's just what they do but here's the thing most people would say when you bring up crime people would say it has nothing to do with race it's on the individual right yeah would you say that yeah. But here's the thing, but you have people to the day who still refer to crime in black communities as black on black crime. Right. You will never hear oh if a white man rapes somebody's daughter or something who happens to be white, they don't call that white on white crime. If a white guy takes a AR fifteen and goes in and starts killing a bunch of white people, they don't call that white on white crime. A white man robs a white man or does something to another white man, they don't call it white on white crime. You don't hear an right. Asian person attacking an Asian person, Asian on Asian crime. Somehow we 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 based our 
this country, I feel like the the internal mind of this country is just so racist because of the historical context of everything. It it, it is it's just branded this idea in everybody's heads that black people are just inherently dangerous, which is why I feel like it's no coincidence why you brought up things like, oh, if I see a black person, I'm going to grip my purse a little tighter because you might rob me. This is exactly what we're talking about. This is why I feel like the way why black the, the black community is the way it is today, because I feel like black people essentially have been pushed on the back burner. It's like, you know, when we had our self-sustaining communities, because we we basically showed that we can do it. We can build self-sustaining communities all day. But these things were burned down. Everything was going to shit and all that. But I feel like if they really, America really wanted to build these black communities up, there'd be nothing stopping them. America could easily build black people. I mean, come on, dude. You know how much we pay in taxes? Like, immigrants alone, dude. Immigrants pay over 400. People always say, oh, we need to get rid of immigrants. Too many immigrants in our country. What most people don't even realize, those 28 million immigrants that you're talking about, those same immigrants pay $7 billion a year, $7 billion a year in Social Security. As a whole, they pay over $405 billion a year in taxes. $2.7 million of those dollars are from undocumented immigrants, for that matter. So here's the idea. And guess what? Those people, they work for exploited wages. And guess what? The, and I know this because a company that I was just working to, uh, two jobs ago, uh, yeah, they were basically, they had a bunch of people in there and they really didn't speak English. A lot of these people, they were, yeah, I talked to them. Yeah, they're, they're from country. They're not here legally and stuff like that. But it's no idea why they have a whole shop full of these people and they're exploiting them off of cheap labor because they know for a fact that they can continue to build off capitalism and build their business off of it. Which is why I further say, like, the ideal of capitalism itself is so racist, but it doesn't realize if capitalism was really working the way it was supposed to, and if America truly, truly believed in the idea of capitalism, everybody would be, I won't say on an equal playing field, but everybody would be okay. The, notice, like, the Asian communities, they don't have as high of a crime rate because they have self-sustaining communities. They, they invest in their own communities, all that stuff. White communities, I'm just going to call them white communities for the sake of our arguments, the bourbon community. It's no, it's no coincidence why white schools, which is, I went to a predominantly white high school, why they have such good, you know, resources, why they have basketball gyms, all these things, extracurriculars, because everything is funded by the property taxes. And that, that's what I'm saying. You can consider this a white community because that's predominantly what it is. If you go to the Hispanic community, you'll see that their, their thing, everything is built based off of them self-sustaining it. Black, the black community to this day is the only community that has not been able to build a successfully self-sustaining community. And I feel like the reason because that is, is simply due to all the historic racism. Because when people try to push the idea, hey, we need to shop black owned, we need to support black owned businesses, people will call it racist, because, oh, well, why does it have to do with skin color or anything like that? Dude, it's because historically for hundreds of years, black people have never been able to close the wealth gap because there's been so many things that historically prevented it. So when we say we want people to shop black owned, go to black communities, spend money in the black communities, we're trying to build on the idea of capitalism. It has nothing to do with racism, and that's the way people take it. And I feel like the reason for that is is because people truly – in their minds, they don't want to see black people. They don't want to see black people build self-sustaining communities. They don't want them to build the way they back up. That is why I feel that there is no self-sustaining black communities today, why there is no black Wall Street, and essentially why nobody has essentially tried to start another one, because it's like, what would be the point? Yeah. Um, I mean, because, so, like, I was, watching, I was watching your videos and stuff like that. I was like, this guy's got a little capitalism in him. Right. The reason why is because, you, you, I mean, you're talking about, you know, especially your Tulsa video. I mean, you're talking yeah. about a, a time in which uh, the black community built themselves up and stuff like that. And, right. and this is this is all I'm advocating for. Right. And it's, yeah. it is it is it is not having uh, such a crazy white mob. Uh, what happened at Tulsa? 
um, d- to happen. That's what I'm not advocating for. You know, even even to the point, like I'm having, I'm advocating for your rights being protected and you having the ability to protect your own rights. And I'll give you an example, right? The the person at Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? You you know about the uh, you know about the uh, one of the p- first people to to start the fight at Tulsa was a black sniper, right? I definitely never heard that, but I'll look into okay. it. Yeah, so so black sniper, and and I mean. I mean, I'm not saying that that that's you know justified in, in any sense. Like, yeah, shoot the head, guy's head off. But like, I I like the idea that you can have your own private property and it's protected not only by the state, but you have the right to protect it yourself, and you get to have the you know depends on, on on how much you produce because you have to produce a value for someone to come and say, hey, I'm going to trade with you. But it depends on how much you're able to produce via labor or via private property to get investment and create create your own business. And I would say, I mean, even, even at the Emancipation Proclamation, tons of black people had the experience of working on the agrarian farms and stuff like that. And this is why we have seen a tremendous increase of black prosperity after the Emancipation Proclamation. They were growing faster than the whole entire country itself. Why? They had so much experience. People were just hiring them left and right. And this was a time in 50 years, in 50 years, over half of the black population was now literate from being illiterate, right? So not even a full entire, like, I think, I think, I don't know, what is 50 years? One generation, two generations? Not even, right? 50 years, right? We're talking about a massive increase, increase in literary, literary uh, rates and then also economic power, right? In, in, in just a short amount of time. Growing faster than the whole entire nation. Why? They had experience, right? And this is what I want for the black community. The black community to do is is gain experience. How? Well, ex- exactly with the, like the uh, an example like slave renting, right? Any time in which they come in contact with businesses, they're forced out of it. Why? Racist policies, right? And that's what that's the whole entire inco- incompatibilityness of, of of racism and capitalism that I'm talking about. That those racist policies shouldn't be there. There's a lot of things that shouldn't be there, and they are there. And we're furthest away from having a government that can can allow you. To have, how about this? Can that can that can create the conditions, right? The environment um, in which you can build yourself up, right? That's the main thing. It's not helping you just giving all to you, but creating the environment in which you can do certain things. And that's specifically what I'm arguing. Okay. Okay. Well, here using your same logic, then so. You agree with the idea that in order to, in order essentially for black people to build a self-sustaining community and essentially build up and benefit off of capitalism, it would essentially have to be racism again. Black people would have to simply rely on their own, do for themselves, be forced to depend on themselves. That essentially that would be the only way that would keep the dollars circulating in the black community. That would be the only thing that would build the black community up as fast as it did in, during the black wall street era. So essentially, Yo, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So, so that's what you're saying. Yeah. So no, 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 absolutely. Because not only the principles that I'm talking about is not only political, but it's also social as well. Right. So even before you even get to individual rights, you would have to recognize that everybody has free will. Everybody has reason um, and, and that they, they, there are an individual first before you can even get to that. So, so what I'm saying is that, not only that uh, you're talking about just relying on themselves, right? I'm, ta- I'm also advocating for a principle of individual rights and me looking at you for you in which white people, anybody who's racist or whatnot, uh, white people can also just look at black people for the merits of them being themselves, right? Instead of looking at black people and say, I don't want to trade with you because you're black, right? So my principle, what I'm advocating for is not only political in which th- there's a proper government to protect your rights, but it's also social, right? Because you have to look at each person as an individual, right? So, if this principle was in full consistency, right? Um, I mean, there's tons of examples of, of just, uh, you know, racist people, uh, you know, even they're racist, they're still investing into the black communities. And even if the people, even to the principles properly institutionalized, even if there's, uh, even if there's not racist people um, and they convert away from racism because of the individualism, I get to look at you because of how you are, your merits and your qualities, and I get to trade with you, give you a proper wage based on what you can produce. Um, and, th- and that's what I'm arguing. So not only that a black community can sustain itself by itself, but it can also even get more help from people who recognize, wow, that's a great thing, what they're doing. 
and I'm a white person and I'm going to invest in them too because why not? If, if, if that community grows, it gets even bigger. And even if I'm a rational individual, I get to profit off of that as well, right? So instead of just looking at it, the angry white mob, hey, a bunch of black guy had freedom, let's go, to, uh, let's go destroy it. If I'm a rational person, if I'm a rational person, I would want to invest in that, build them up so I can eventually trade with them and not only help them, but I can help myself by investing in it and getting more money as well. So it's not only political, but it's social as well. I, I don't know why, but I feel like in the strangest way, you just described gentrification. <laughs> I can't. Bro, you knew it. Bro, I'm serious. I don't realize how after everything you just said, I'm like, bro, you realize you just described gentrification, right? And that's literally what happened here in my city of Chicago. If you go into, have you ever heard of Cabrini Green? You might have no. seen the movie Candyman. All right. Well, basically, dude, this was a this was a bad neighborhood, man. It was gang and gang infested, like the worst. Everything of what people think of the black community when they see the black community, that's what it is. And basically, everything that you just said. That is what basically took those same black people who used to live in that community is what pushed them out, moved more white people in. And now this area, you go down there, you wouldn't even recognize the city anymore. The whole neighborhood, everything you see, Starbucks, you see all, all types of stuff, like everything that the whole neighborhood just looks completely different. And I feel like based off of what you just described, that doesn't necessarily help the black community. If anything, that actually hurts the black community because what it's doing is, yeah, you're coming back in here, you're going back into these neighborhoods where the property, you're getting property value for you know little to nothing, pennies on the dollar. Basically, you move all these black people out, you make it to where they can't afford to live there. Now you build up this community. Well, we're not gonna necessarily call it the white community because that would be racist, but you're, put, you're making it a place where black people no longer can afford to live which is generally going to bring what more white people, which are further going to help sustain this community. So if anything, I feel like what you just described even further hurts black people than it actually helps them. Well, uh, well, hold on. Even, even to that point, uh, even in full context, right? What you just, I, you just isolated one instance and even to the principle of what I'm talking about, which is uh, individualism, individual rights and stuff like that. There is multiple in instances in which I have brought out in which it, there has been great uh, black progress and stuff like that in the sense of uh, how many how many examples that I have to bring up, right? Um, I mean, well, you, you, know, you mentioned like, you know, black people having jobs, you know, being literate again. But I mean, even then where you, you still can't leave out the context that even though even black people who have the same jobs, who were lucky enough to get the same jobs as other white people, they were still never paid the same wages. So even then, that's still exploitation. Regardless, yes, you have the right to not work for this person, but you know this is going to be the best that you can get for the simple fact that, yeah, yeah, you're going to accept the fact that you're black, but you know you're going to be the highest paid working black person in this field just simply due to the fact that you're in this field and they're allowing you to be there. Right. Um, make it rid of a useless tax separation of business and state. <clears throat> reading the comments now. Oh man, man, damn! I man, I haven't even been reading these comments, man. Shit, you were probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was gonna make that point too, Mister Ibis said. There's no right to have the same wage as others. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would advocate for a system that would uh, a business person, a rational one at least, uh, would base on the wage on the um the merits and the qualities of a person. Because as I explained earlier, um, when you have a, a institutionalized minimum wage, I mean, the black unemployment goes up all, all the time. Why? Because we're very, well, I mean, I hate to say it. The reason why we're so young is because of, of the violence, right? Um, is that's why the median age is 18. Um, and because we're so young, we lack experience. Uh, we don't, you know, even if it's a, even if we go to like the gas station and work there and Walmart and stuff like that, right? There's not a lot of people that can do that because we're, we're so young and we haven't worked that long. And therefore, I mean, if, if uh, minimum wage is increased and stuff like that, the capitalists look for people who have uh, more experience and therefore is more productive. Um, and therefore the black community is definitely left out of that section. And we've seen that since 1931 um, with the Davis Bacon Act, all the way into increase during um, the, for the, uh, the 40s, all the way into Ronald Reagan in which he increased it and stuff like that, all the way to the, the 60s, that was increased and stuff like that. And, and now we're talking about a $15 minimum wage increase and stuff like that, which is double what we have now. Um, so, I mean, I advocate for a system in which your wage is determined based on what you can produce as an individual in a voluntary agreement between you and your employer. 
I mean, okay. I mean, we'll see. Well, now this is more, it seems like it's more of a matter of opinion than, you know, the idea itself. Like, cause that, mean, cause that's, that's, that's really what it seemed like this is coming down to. It seems like it's more so a matter of opinion. I mean, because like, yeah, because, no. like there's, there's, there's just instances like, okay. All right. Say, so, all right, here's a perfect example. So I don't feel necessarily what you said applies necessarily to the black community. I don't feel like, I feel like data and things are misrepresented because you can't necessarily specifically apply that to young black teens or black community as a whole. I mean, I have a younger cousin, he's only 16. And I mean, that kid, he works like two, three jobs right now. And I mean, right. I mean, he's specifically doing that because he's trying to put himself through college and stuff like that. Like he's like, he's doing whatever he has to by any means necessary. And, Essentially, like I don't feel like I feel like now you you say it's about individuals, but I feel like now we're we're generalizing. We we need to go back to individuals. I don't feel like it has anything necessarily to do with race. We got to look at the individuals as a whole. Me, when I started working, I started working for minimum wage, just like everybody else. I was flipping burgers and you know cooking hot dogs at concession stands at a baseball park. I was only fifteen years old. That was my first job. Did it suck? Hell yeah. I hated doing it. I mean, especially in the summertime, I'm back there sweating bullets and stuff like, dude, man, this sucks. But guess what? I It made me appreciate the idea of having to work for a dollar because back then I was only 15. To me, seven seven twenty five. like, man, this is it right here. But you, you got to understand, like, that was like, I'm, I'm almost 30. That was like almost 15 years ago. And we still haven't increased minimum wage since then. But yet the price of everything else is still going up. So should, wouldn't it make more sense that we're going to keep increasing prices on everything, but keep the minimum wage here? Wouldn't it make sense to possibly raise the minimum wage to maybe try to combat the increase? I mean, if you do that, I mean, you got more I mean, people. Because, yeah, I know, I know what, what yeah. you're about to say. It was like, yeah, that's going to cause inflation and everything. Well, no, no, else. no, 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 no. I'm like, oh, I'll, put, here, I'll put it this way because I, I don't think I made it clear at all uh, during the debate. By any means, am I not a damn conservative? By any okay, means. you know what? That's all I needed you to say. That's by all any I means, am I not no damn conservative? Am I, okay. By any means, am I not no damn libertarian, right? Um, I should have made that explicit long ago because um, I saw in your comment section you were talking about smoking conservatives. By any means, am I not could I would I wouldn't – hey, no hate, though. Uh, maybe a little bit. Well, no hate, though. I, I don't think – I don't think um, – the principles that I'm laying out in, in full historical philosophical context, I don't think a conservative could come close. No, I, I, I don't. I don't think. Funny. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, you want to know what? I'm going to be honest with you. You actually shocked me a few times throughout this debate with all the knowledge that you get. I'm just like, hmm, this dude don't do not. You don't sound like a conservative. Dude. I would. You know, I should have made that. I actually, I should have made that clear a long time ago. Because I thought you were a conservative, bro. I told. I literally thought you was this girl's brother, and I thought like, okay, <clears> so she's up in the smoking and debate, so she just sending her younger brother at me. That's literally what I oh, thought. You guys thought we were biological. Oh shit! I I, bro, y'all look alike, man. Y'all. I thought you were joking. I thought you were joking. Oh shit. Sweet. Okay, so yeah, no. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a joke, but okay. Yeah, no, she's not my sister. Um, I have no affiliation with PragerU. I I don't necessarily want an affiliation with PragerU. I'm not a conservative. Um, what uh, what I would say, I I'm just a radical capitalist, right? And and I'll put it this way, please, for the love of God, cons I will put it this way: conservatives are not capitalists, right? What they're they what they are are advocates. They misrepresented history. They're advocates of the Confederacy. Not to the extent that they did, but in the sense that they believe in states' rights, and that's what the Confederate Confederacy want was was wanted states' rights. I'm exactly. an advocate. I'm an advocate which moral, political, and, and all values are on the basis of the individual, and it starts from the individual, right? They're on the basis okay. of states' rights. They're not capitals, right? Because capitalism properly conceived, right, from our founding fathers, they didn't have it perfectly conformed altogether. But what they believed in, and what I've been re re reading of them, is so liberating. Um, and, and slightly consistent and whatnot, conservatives are nothing like our founding fathers whatsoever. They might reference, it, reference them, sure, absolutely, right? And they say, oh, he said this and oh, he said that. But if we're talking about individual rights from the place of free will and reason, half of the shit that the conservatives advocate for, our founding fathers will roll in their fucking grave looking at them. Exactly. You know something, man, see? 
you know what? My bad. So what? Uh, I should have I should have had you clarify that at the beginning, then, because I literally yeah. thought the whole time I'm debating you like I'm debating a conservative. That's why I'm literally keep bringing up. You know something? If you would have told me this, we would have had a completely different debate. Yeah, that's right. Because I'm literally debating you from like, okay, you know what? I got to shut down conservative talking points. And that's literally on the basis that I was debating you on. So yeah, I feel like, see, here's the thing. So now that's why I feel like we're getting somewhere. Now that the further we get into this conversation, I realize it's more so of a matter of an opinion issue more than a debate issue. So because so, now that I'm more so, I'm more so see your stance now. But the yeah. main thing, what I was trying to debate originally when I added or stitched that girl's video or whatever is when she said that racism is specifically a deterrent or capitalism is a deterrent away from racism. I'm like, if you look at the historical context, like, no, it's really because of because of so much racism. That's not what really drove capitalism in black communities. I feel like, no, that. Right, because of racism, that's why black people were able to sustain and build themselves up and like that, because they had no choice. I mean, if they were, you know, treated equal from the beginning, if everybody was on the equal playing field and everybody was on the same playing field, there wouldn't have been a need for all this legislation. There wouldn't have need to be a need for emancipation proclamation or anything like that. Like, and she's saying like, well, yeah, the, once we started going with welfare and started going anti-capitalist, that's when the poverty rate started going up. I'm like, but you're leaving out the content. That's why I brought up the war on drugs and, you know, when black fathers were being removed from the household, uh, black women being forced to go on government assistance, bringing up my grandma. That's why I brought up these things, because I feel like that is essentially what you were trying to debunk. And I'm I like, was like, what? I was like, I was like, I was like, nah, bro. I'm like, no, because here's the thing. The more you kept talking, I'm like. Wait, what are you talking about? Like, I feel like it was the, that's where the miscommunication was coming in. I'm like, what, dude, what are you talking about? That's not the argument. Like, I feel like we, like the argument of what we were, I was originally trying to put and what you were trying to argue, it was, we were just coming at it from different angles. Like, I feel like we can somewhat meet in the middle on some of the standards of why things were the way they were, but I feel like that's originally what, what sparked this debate in the first place. Uh, man, I mean, I, I forgot what my other point, but what what you said was a really good point, and this is this is my whole entire thing. You said you said the the black people, um, I don't want to say it like that. The black community built themselves up uh, because of racism because they had no no other choice. Right. I'm advocating for a system where they have that choice, right? Regardless oh, of this racism you, or not. Okay, you know what? That's the, yeah. This would have been a much shorter debate. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm advocating. I mean, I I do a lot of I do a lot of philosophy, so. If, I'm I'm just talking in a historical context. I haven't even got to like the philo the philosophical aspect of my beliefs. And and you keep saying like it's a every time you said it, it's a matter of opinion. I'm kind of shaking my head. It's like, eh. but, but it's like I do a lot of philosophy. So right. uh, you know I'll, I'll put it I'll put it as short. I'm I'm an advocate of one reality. Uh, Isaac Newton, right? He he was a, a staunch supporter of reality, and the way to understand it was here, a reason. Two self interest, right? John Locke. Right. John Locke and, and other founding fathers and American revolutionaries, they believed in self-interest, not self-interest in the sense that you, 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 you uh, step on other people. I'm not talking about that self-interest. I'm talking about when two. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think. Yeah, my bad, man. I think my phone might be done. Uh, no, no. I mean, I can hear you, but it's not on my you're not on my screen. But sure, I'll, st I could, I'll still continue talking, I guess. Um, yeah. Self-interest in the sense that uh, Spitz uh, Spinoza, uh, another philosopher, he says, um, the greatest benefit to man is that when there's two rational people. Why? Because you get to trade and identify values together. If one's irrational, he might steal from you. There's no self-interest there. And then thirdly, right? So you got reality, self-interest, and then you have um, individual rights, right? In the sense of politics, right? right. You, you say that, well, what's reality? Reality is that we all own ourselves in the sense that we get, we, we're, we're, we control ourselves, Right, and we get to control our actions. We're not forced by other people. Self-interest that we get to identify what brings us happiness, hence the the right to happiness. Um, and 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 the way to protect our happiness is individual rights. And the purpose of individual rights is to ban the initiation of force because the initiation of force is the only thing that's going to hinder my ability to use my mind, to use my reason, to identify. Because I'm not thinking for myself when you use force against me. I'm thinking in the context of you. So an example: you force me. If, if I have a hot dog, you say, give me that hot dog, and you're pointing a gun at me. In my mind, I want to eat the hot dog, but you're about to shoot me. So now I have to, like, abide by your will, what you want. 
And that's the whole purpose of individual rights. And if we ban the initiation force, you get to have private property, private ownership, use the private property, profit, business, trade, all that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I we're feel at like 59 54. My dog was a little extreme because, I mean, the reality, I mean, ain't nobody putting the guns in your head because, I mean, using the logic, it's like ain't nobody making anybody go out and get on welfare or ain't nobody <laughs> making nobody not go back to work and sit at home and to continue to collect this extra money on unemployment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it feel like right. it's certain things. But I, I, get, I get what you were saying. I definitely get what you were trying to say. But, I mean, hey, man, well, I mean, I feel like we, we both kind of got our point across uh, – you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. shit. I mean, it seems like I, cause I, cause I kind of, I had it, I had to work it somehow because I, again, I watched your videos and I was like, this guy's got a little, uh, maybe not what you referred to capitalism, but the way I was referring to it, I was like, yeah, this guy's got a little capitalism in it. You want, you want a system in which we can build ourselves up, and, and that's yeah. what I'm trying to advocate for. It. And, and and it's not debating on the word choices. Fuck the word choices, right? I can, yeah. we can set up a call and I will bring up like. Uh, Webster's Dictionary dic uh, dictionary uh, definition of capitalism, and I'll show you how it ties to my definition, right? The way I define capitalism is a social system based on the recognition of individual rights. Why? Because it's conventionally known as the private means of production, and that entails private property, and private property, how it's gained is that you have to use your mind to, to create material values. Why? We are beings, of, we're conceptual beings, we're rational beings. We don't have automatic private property. I can't just go outside and claim, uh, you know, somebody's car is private property. No, I have to work to get that car and buy it, and then it's private property. And how is that possible? Right. Through my, me using my mind and, and reason to produce certain things, right? And and, and that's what I'm trying to, to to. I forgot where I was going, but that. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I use reason to get private property, and I need the freedom to use my mind. What's the only thing that's going to prevent me from using my mind? The initiation of force, and then. In its most fundamental sense, capitalism has to be a social system based on the recognition of individual rights where force is not used politically or privately. And that's what I'm advocating for. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, because I that's where I was like, I, I get where that where that argument comes in, but like the reason I was looking at it differently, I was thinking more of the fact that when you say like force, like you say you're against force, right? Right. But yeah, essentially, like what I was trying to count with, well, essentially the force is what made black people build their self-sustaining community, what gave them the idea of capitalism in the first place. Because if they weren't forced upon the state of a dependency upon each other, you know, to help each other build each other up, then, you know, essentially where would the black community be today? You know right. what I mean? Right. So, yeah. and, it, so, and like so you I, said, yeah. that choice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. So I, so I, we definitely agree on that. Then. Shit, I mean, yeah. damn. Um, I, I, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I, I, I'll question this, right? Because I'm going to record this and post it to YouTube. So now, now here's the thing. Yeah, when, when I post this on YouTube, since at the end we're, we're seeing like we're coming to an agreement. Do we, do we want to just trash the debate and then just me cut the fucking conversation? Because this is a really productive conversation. Um, or do you want me to keep the whole entire two hour thing? Oh, wait, wait, we've been going live for two hours? Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Hey, man, I was just going to upload it on my YouTube just for the sake of having some content, man. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, man, I ain't no, no, no sneak this, bro. I ain't going to, you know, take, cut the uh, clips out of context to make it look like, oh, look, I, I kicked his ass in the debate. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, really what it is, like, well, originally, like I said, what I thought was I was debating a conservative. So essentially what I had, what I base my whole debate off of is like, look here, I'm about to shut down every talking point that you're about to use. And that was really the whole tactic. But now that I'm, I'm starting to get, get more of a clear understanding of what you meant by, you know, the idea of capitalism and everything like that, or, you know, saying, I, I finally get what you were talking about now. But yeah, right. when you first pitched my video, I was the fact like, yeah, you still ignoring the fact that the poverty rate got cut in half. And I'm just like, wait a second. No, I'm. And, yeah, so that's why it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. That's why I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about? Like, we're not arguing about the poverty rate, but y'all, what we arguing about is the context of why those things were the way they were, why the poverty rate was the way it was, and how black people still were not on the same equal playing field. Like, that was really my whole basis of the whole argument. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I basically feel like what people were, what, what y'all two were saying was that capitalism was a good thing for black people. But what I'm arguing, like, well, 
my argument is that if capitalism was really a good thing for black people, that we would still have those self-sustaining black communities and everything still today if capitalism was really about capitalism. But yeah, but like you said, like I feel like a lot of conservatives, everything they say is contradictory. They don't really want capitalism. It is. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. They want the complete opposite. So, yeah, so that was really the main point that I was trying to debunk in the first place. So, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I was previously a conservative, uh, but I mean, after like, you know, obviously some research, like I was like, this isn't for me. Uh, right. there are a lot of the points are contradictory. They're wrong. They talk about the founding fathers. They, they don't read the founding fathers. Right. Exactly. Uh, and stuff like that. Is my image still clear? Uh, you can still see me, right? Yeah, I can still see you. Oh shit. I'll show you my shit, bro. I'll show you my shit, bro. This is, this is my bookshelf that I've been working on for about oh, a year. Okay. Yeah, All right, go on, you, man. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on for about a year, but like, oh, okay. I mean, wait, how old? Wait, how old are you again? I'm 16. You 16? Yeah, I know. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> I saw, I saw, I'm 16, bro. Uh, uh, 2004, bro. 2004. Wow, that's crazy, man. I, the whole time I'm sitting here thinking you like, man. I knew you was young, like, man. I didn't know you were that young. Yeah, and nah, I'm, I'm about to turn 17 in a minute, but I've been in politics for three years. I've been a conservative for about two years of it. And I, I, I just here recently in the past year, I switched away from conservatism. I went into a, little bit to, uh, a bit of libertarianism and I was like, fuck that shit. And, and now I'm, I just I just want to claim, uh, you know, just capitalism, bro, because because that right. to me is the only moral system, bro. You don't have the right to initiate force against other people. That's all I hold. Right. OK. OK. No. And I, you know what? I can get behind that. I can respect that like wholeheartedly. So. Definitely. No, hey, man, but hey, for you men 16, man, you smarter than, I'm going to tell you that about 98% of the people I done debunked on TikTok, bro. You probably, <laughs> probably hand down one of the smartest, man. So, hey, man, for you being 16, man, you young, that's what's up, man. Keep it up, man. Keep reading, man. Damn your path. You're going to do great things one day, man. I see you. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Um, Yeah, I was like, I was going through your stuff, too. I was checking out your music and whatnot, and I was like, yo, this guy's like, Crazy, bro. Cause I was like, "Yo, six thousand and verified." I was like, "Yo, how the fuck?" <laughs> I know, man. Hey, trust me, man. People been in my inbox talking crazy like the past two days, man. I've been on, <laughs> bro. I never thought I would see the day of conservative Instagram, bro. But I've been on that shit for like the past three days, bro. It's it's crazy oh, on here. Bro. Never end up on this side, bro. Ever. Man, I mean, I hey, I'll I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and um, cause earlier I said I I, I just the way I um talked to, about conservatives was just a little spite, but hey, I I still have some friends that were conservatives. I mean, they'll agree to oh, yeah, certain no, things. I ain't got, really, I ain't got nothing know. against all of them. Yeah, yeah no, like, I mean, you know I follow a couple conservative creators on, but here's the thing: they not like super far right. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. can read lines and can tell bullshit from bullshit like you can. So that's one thing I can respect that, but. Here's the thing. They make it seem like, oh, it's just a difference in political views. Like, yeah, no, no, <laughs> no you're fucking wrong is what it is. Like, <laughs> it's not a difference in political views. You're wrong. It's oh. what yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's really what it is. But no, man, no, I can never respect that. But yeah, bro, you ever want to chop it up, man? Just have it up, whatever, man. I'm always open for it. Shit, bro. I mean, hey, fuck it. Why not? Um, let's Let's pick a topic. Let's pick a topic next time, and then let's fucking talk about it. Why not? Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna get yelled at my parents in a second because I didn't go down and, and eat dinner. Um, oh no! Go do your thing, man. I'm about to record yeah. this. I'm about to chop it up. You know. You know. Fuck the debate yeah. side. We, we. I mean, fuck the debate, bro. We we agreed at the end, and, and we we come with some some good consensus and, and fleshed out a lot of, uh, you know, some good principles of what I was talking about. Um, and how, you know, you agreed and stuff like that. Um, cause fuck, I should start, you know, I should start making that more explicit, that explicit, that conservatives are not cons uh, capitalists. And I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem, especially not only in the, the, the politically inclined black community, um, that like to talk about ideas and politics. Yeah. They hate capitalism because of conservatives and I can't blame them. I right. can't cause the conservatives, they, they, they represent it so wrong. They they do this 
they do this twist and and I have to and I have to blame Ronald Reagan for this right because Ronald Reagan was was definitely the the flip of the switch of 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 republicanism and conservatism and how it is today and it's so bad right I want to go to back to I mean why was Booker T Washington a republican I mean I'm not a republican but he fought in in Frederick Douglass he they fought for individualism and individual rights nowadays it's like it's a bunch of bullshit I mean you the republicans exactly. and the conservatives are not like they were and it's because of Ronald Reagan and right. and and I have to I have to blame all the uh, the uh, the conservatives. So if anybody that's watching and you hate capitalism, please reassess your view on capitalism and stuff like that, because the conservatives are not the place to look if you want to learn about capitalism. Hey, facts, man. Hey, we can definitely agree on that. Then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. not the place. But yeah, but no, go ahead, man. Go eat your dinner, man. Go eat. Spend time with your fam, man. It was good chopping it up with you, man. Yeah, I'm gonna chop this up. I'm gonna throw it on my YouTube and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll definitely pick another topic next time. All right, bet. This is perfect. All right, man. Be smooth. Gotcha.